Isn't the Lord good? Isn't the Lord good? Isn't the Lord good? Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want you to go, please, to Mark 16, verse 20. Mark 16, verse 20. While you go there, Beverly's going to sing us a song. <laughs> Obviously. While you go there, I want to go here to 1 Peter 1. And I want to read a few verses. And then we'll go over to Mark 16. And uh, I want you this week, tonight before you go to bed, I want you to read Colossians 1. Pray it. Not just, you know, uh, the little bits, you know, that we were told to, you know, from verse 9 onwards. But I want you to particularly look, Colossians, I want you to particularly look at that you were transferred out of darkness in the kingdom, into the kingdom of his dear son and his love. How many people believe you made the switch? Let me see your hands. Shout it out. I made the switch. One more time, say it. I made the switch. If you're visiting tonight, you're so welcome. This is Sunday Night Flow. We're not really trying to have a meeting. Amen. We're just showing up to allow the Spirit of God to move in demonstration and power. I believe it's time for that. If you believe that, shout a big amen. I'm so tired of religious services. I'm so tired of religious services here at Millennial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm so tired. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm so tired of you being religious. I am so tired of you just acting like a charismatic Pentecostal when this is the day of the saints, just doing the same old thing that you've always done, shakalaka laka, and expecting things to change. Well, you've been praying shakalaka laka for 20 years, and you're still the same, honey. So something somewhere has to connect. I said something somewhere has to connect. I'm going to do it again. Something somewhere has to connect. It's not shakalaka all the way to the rapture. There has to be something. I'm telling you, there's people coming against experience, but you know what? I want the experience. Amen. I want to experience my marriage. I just don't want to live with my life. I, my wife, I want to experience my wife. You say, man, that's, that's like wild. I just don't want to just serve the Lord. I want to experience God. Amen. You, you take some of these. I mean, there's a lot of power up here on this platform. I'm telling you, some of these outlets up here, there's a lot of power coming in there to do everything that we do. I'd like you all tonight to wet your finger. And come up here, and every one of you, try not to experience what's flowing up there. Well, I, I just don't believe it's necessary. Well, stop, stop trying to stop me if I believe it is necessary. Shut it out. I believe. It is necessary to sense the anointing of God. How many people believe that? Well, my brother Paul, I don't think that you need to be. I, I don't. You keep your mouth quiet with your religious self and go to the Baptist church where they believe that signs and wonders have passed away. And they believe that tongues is over and all of those different things. Because in this church... We don't believe any of it is over. We believe, actually, that we've barely started. After 2,000 years, oh, the sign man's going to the Baptist church. I'm telling you, you might be shocked with some of these Baptist churches. They're being radically touched by God. And these char charismatic churches like this here, I'm telling you, if we don't watch it, we're going to be left behind. Because if deliverance gets a hold of some of these churches, we're all going to be sitting up here in our pride, charismatic clubs, thinking that we have a premium on the move of God. <laughs> we ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, I know you came to the right meeting tonight. 
Shut it up. You, you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, say it again. I haven't seen anything yet. Come on, God's going to knock people out of chairs. Get ready. Some of you are so used to those chairs. It's like you get into that chair at the beginning of a service, and it's like a comfort blanket. I'm in. I'm safe. I'm secure. I'm not going to stop until I see you break out in the aisle. And you tap the person beside you and say, get out of my way. I need a bit of space right now. Look at your neighbor and say, you know you're religious. You just, you know, try not to be. You know you're religious. <laughs> he said, I'm not accepting it. You can hear the spirit of faith there, can't you? I refuse that in the name of Jesus. I am not religious. <laughs> you are. If you can't get out and break out in the aisle without thinking about what somebody else thinks about you, and thinking about how crazy you are. You know why I'm doing this on a Sunday night? You know why I'm doing this on Tuesday nights? Because I'm trying to get us over ourselves. Because there's some people, they don't like it when I say, touch the person beside you. Oh my God. And you particularly choose a seat where there's no one. I'm looking at you. <laughs> you particularly choose a seat where there's no one because then if he does get into a flow, me, and it's like turn around and pray with three or four people, then you can drop your head, go into your selfish bubble and act religious and spiritual with your holy self. How many people know that's the truth? How do I know it? Because I've done it. I've done it. I've done all the above. <laughs> and you have too. We scan the room to see where the safest place is to sit. Because this is millennial, anything is possible. Amen. But we're just getting revved up. I'm just pulling the rip cord, ladies and gentlemen. And one of these days, you, you think that the motor's running? I'm just still pulling the rip cord. And one of these days, the motor's going to kick in. And we'll never go back to the way it was. There's places I could go in the spirit, but I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you because there's no fun going on my own. I'm waiting on you. Say this with me. I take authority over religion. It's amazing how charismatic you can be and still be religious. Check yourself out. I'm giving God permission in every way I know how possible. Check me out, run me over, do me over, do whatever you need to do. Because if there is anything in me that is stopping you flowing, and, and that's the pastor. So you have to understand, you have no hope of staying frozen <laughs> in this church. Because I'm coming like a blowtorch. <laughs> that was amazing, wasn't it, what the Spirit of God did in your life tonight? It's precious. What's your name? Same. Same? What a beautiful name. And your name? Yeah. Wow. I just got a boring name. Paul. Beautiful names. Lord bless you both. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I said, oh, hallelujah. Are you all going to, who are you? Where do you go? Do you all work here? Are you studying or are you working? Working, working you, We're waitresses. in the name of Jesus. Trying You're trying to figure it out. Yeah. You, you want to go to school? 
Well, the Lord's helping you figure it out. Because that was powerful tonight. I don't do that every service. You got to know that there was a prayer that you prayed. And he heard it. But the Spirit of God wants you to know is that these things are done spiritually. And some of the things that happened to you tonight, and I don't know if you're aware of these things or not, but some of these things that happened to you, it's the only way that it can be done. And it, it bypasses and surpasses years of praying in your own understanding. It's the most amazing thing. Stretch your hands towards them and, Lord, use them mightily. Use them powerfully. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of God is still heavy on them. Whew. Don't you wish the Spirit of God was heavy on you? Come on. Sometimes we've done this long, too long. That we forget what it was like when the Spirit of God came on us and caused us to jerk at the front of the church for hours, vibrating under the power of God. Have we become so perfected that we don't need that anymore? Some of us need revisited with this sort of thing. Amen. Because you do it not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit. You'll travel beyond the speed of light. And God will not be going at your speed. He'll supernaturally catch you up to his speed. And you think it's going to take a lot of praying for God's will for your life, but you get in the spirit and you get a kufrunga And you start working with a kuframanastulo kufia kineastaya. And you start working with the Holy Ghost and a vontalakamandanglistia. You start working with the Spirit of God, and I tell you, things begin to change. Menjula capra pedasco mina ombre attire. Shut it out. Lives are changing. Lives are changing. Lives are changing. When we started the Lighthouse Hostel in Northern Ireland, we had the guys come from the homeless facility over to the church, and they could hardly sit in the meeting without the power of God affecting them. And the ones that didn't want to change, they would, they would ask the ones that looked after the, the, the facility, we don't want to go to the church. And when they were asked, why do, they not, why do you not want to go? Because if you're in here, you've got to go. He said, because there's too much power in the church. There's too much power in what the pastor says. Because they wanted to keep. They didn't want to change. And so if you don't want to change. Then you can't, you can't stay in that. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the anointing is so strong. You're in Mark 16. I'm over in 1 Peter 1. Uh, and it says this, Peter, an apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ, writing to the elect, exiles of the dispersion, scattered abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who were chosen and foreknown by God the Father, and consecrated, sanctified, made holy by the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, 
I want to read that again to you. Who were chosen and foreknown by God the Father and consecrated, sanctified, made holy by the capital S Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ the Messiah and to be sprinkled with his blood, may great spiritual blessing and peace be given you in increasing abundance. That spiritual peace to be realized in and through Christ. Freedom from fears. Say that with me. Now say it from here. Freedom from fears. Agitating passions and moral conflicts. Now, I believe that's a great confession, that I am free from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts because of what Christ did through the power of his blood, by the operation of the capital S Spirit. I am free from fear. I'm free from the fear of man. How many people receive that? Mm. Mm. It's okay. It's just the Spirit of the Lord. There is such an adventure. Bow your heart and receive this. There is such an adventure. It is about to break open upon your life. For choosing to follow the path of peace and refuse the strife. Get ready. Get ready. For some of you think that you left much behind. But that's not in your spirit. It's just a memory in your mind. There's so much more ahead. <laughs> so stop looking back. And receive all the more. And you'll never witness lack. Hallelujah. 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 I'm doing my best to try and keep going here. Whew. Hallelujah. Shut it out. The best is yet to come. Come on, say it again. The best as yet. Is Bob Rogers in here? Bring him in for me, please. Embreku Brangas. Bengangur Kokosarmai Velsto I declare over you that you are free from fears, agitating passions, and moral conflicts. Verse 3 says this, Praised, honored, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his boundless mercy we have been born again to an ever-living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Born in you into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay and imperishable, unsullied and unfading, reserved in heaven for you. You are being guarded, garrisoned by God's power. Underline this, please. You are being guarded garrisoned by God's power through your faith till you fully inherit that final salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. You should be exceedingly glad on this account. Though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations so that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Hear me, yes. Tulsa. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. This is in the Bible. 
that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Your faith, faith which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold, which is tested and purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to redound to your praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Without having seen him, you love him. How many people love him tonight? Come on, how many people love him tonight? Come on up here, Bob, the anointing's here. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not even now see him, you believe in him and exult and thrill in expressible and glorious triumph, heavenly joy. At the same time, you receive the result, outcome, consummation of your faith, salvation of your souls. There is an outcome. <laughs> Stand to your feet. I want you to stretch your hands towards this gentleman. He could lose his job in the morning for standing up for what is right. And if he does, God's got a better one for him. Now you have all these people praying with you tonight and you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. In actual fact, if you were do wrong, if you were done wrong, they are the ones that need to be afraid. I command all pressure to lift off you. All pressure now. That's it. Look at that. All weight of that to leave you. All weight of it all. All financial weight. All the care of it. All the care of it. Come on, family. Uh, come on. You know what that's like. We've all been there in a measure. Look at the people that lost their jobs during COVID because they wouldn't take a vaccine. wouldn't comply. Well, this man has made a decision to stand for the truth. And do you think God is going to let that go unnoticed and unchecked? Where do you see what God does? I speak the fire and boldness of the Holy Ghost. Burr! And you will stand and face it with the strength of Almighty God and you will see the goodness of God manifest in your family in the name of Jesus. Come on, thank the Lord right now. Thank the Lord right now. Come on everybody, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. How many people is going to be mindful of Bob in the morning? Come on. How many people is going to pray over Bob in the morning? Praise God. Thank you, Bob. So having said all of that, then we go now to Mark 16. And we enter into Mark 16 with the promise that we are free. Free from the pressures. And if there is a triumph of our faith, we know that we're going to come out the other side of it. It's nobody else's issue. My pressure is not your problem. So I must not take it out on you. That's good. That's right. That was a good word right there. How many people have ever, ever received the brunt of another person's pressure? Was it fun? All right, look at your neighbor and say, leave me alone. Oh, let me. <laughs> The trying of your faith worketh patience. Yours. I know it's trying to work patience in everybody around you. But it's not talking about them, it's talking about you. 
We have to stop making our pressure everybody else's issue. God's trying to set you free from agitating passions, irritations, fears, and moral conflicts. Just like Bob just there. It's a moral conflict. And as these days get darker in our workplaces, we're going to be faced with moral conflicts, which could cost you that job because you refuse to do it any other way except with truth and integrity. When I was in uh, the police force and, and all the things that I did in that there, we had to fill out a form at the end, of, um, the end of the month, and it was called the F-40. On the F-40, basically the jobs that we were doing, at times you could just, you could, if you were in any way deceitful, write your own ticket. But then there's Paul. And I'm filling out my F40, and I'm actually saying what hours I worked. How many people knows that that was a conflict with others? But I would have rathered had the conflict with my colleagues than to be out of sorts with God. Or a conflict with my own moral self of what I know to be right and wrong. Because it matters when it comes to your prosperity. It does. And I'm not talking about you not getting lots of money. You could have lots of money, but you know, at the same time, if you choose to live deceitfully, at some time when you don't realize that it could all be taken from you. It's gone quiet. We enjoyed the first 65 minutes of this service. But this is what's setting us up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I can sense the Holy Ghost. Mighty Holy Ghost. That's been in me all evening. Mighty Holy Ghost. Come on, say it like you mean it. Mighty. Did you hear, you hear that when we say that? Say it again. Mighty. So then we get over here to, basically, he's telling you, that there is no doubt about this. That you are going to lay hands on the sick. And they're going to recover. But before he gets there, what does he say? And they went out and preached everywhere. Verse 20. And the Lord worked with them, confirming, confirming the word. Through accompanying signs. The Living Translation says this, And the disciples went everywhere preaching, and the Lord was with them and confirmed what they said by the miracles that followed their messages. Hallelujah. How many disciples do we have here tonight? You're not my disciples. You're the Lord's disciples. I may have the awesome privilege of being your pastor, and it is the highest honor. And yes, we can teach the laws of discipleship and discipline, but the Lord is your shepherd. Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. 
The Amplified says it like this. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by supernatural signs and miracles that closely accompanied it. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand this, that the church was not born powerless. It wasn't born weak. It wasn't born impotent or anemic. It was born in a demonstration of the power and dependency of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout it out, it's my time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me to Isaiah 8, please. You all doing okay? Many Okamora Pedesco. Maybe my brother that was playing the keyboard tonight, you just give me five minutes and come on back and, and help me finish this up tonight. I want to get a few scriptures out and but Isaiah 8, look at this, Isaiah 8, 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and wonders that are to take place in Israel from the Lord of hosts, who dwells on Mount Zion. It's not beautiful. And when the people, instead of putting their trust in God, shall say to you, consult for direction, mediums and wizards who chirp and mutter, should not a people seek and consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? Direct such people to the teaching and to the testimony. If their teachings are not in accord with this word, it is surely because there is no dawn and no morning for them. We should not in any way have anything to do with anything that is occultic. Oh, it's very quiet in here. There are lying signs, lying wonders, people that are seeking their own. Be very cautious. That's where discernment comes in. Motive is everything. James 4 tells us you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. One translation says you ask with the wrong motive. You want God to touch you, use you for your own aim and purposes. To your own elevation. To your own exaltation Satan will help you the worst thing that a person can be doing is not smoking cigarettes sucking on weed taking acid doing cocaine sexual issues the worst thing a person can be doing is doing pride. And when the church gets their eyes off all the sinful traits and gets their eyes on the big dawn of all these things, pride. And we take our pride You're going to see everything else shift. Everybody say shift. I dare you to prove me wrong in this. Pride is the issue. And we religious folks, all we want to hang out in is we don't want to call somebody on their pride. But we'll hold them on the table regarding them smoking a cigarette, drinking a beer. How could you go and have sex with that person? How could you do that? 
but yet we won't address the real issue, which is pride. And I'm just blowing this wide open. Like, And if it hits you, go work with the Lord. Because I can tell you within every single one of us is this horrid, devilish trait. And it wants power. It wants to be seen. It wants to be recognized. Not me, pastor, not me, not me. I know not you. You're the only one. <laughs> and that's why you're here tonight to help the rest of us get free. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, I'm getting free. I'm getting free. Oh, that's so beautiful. Say it again. I'm, I'm getting, getting free. free. Say motive, motive is, is everything. everything. Now, I know we shut down that marijuana thing, that recreational, but can you love the one that's still smoking it? Because that's not what I'm after. I'm not after hurting the one that's still smoking marijuana. They, they do what they do. But you that are saved... And you're more concerned about the sinner doing what the sinner does than the pride that you have in your heart? Look at your neighbor and say, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> this is a good message, isn't it? I think this is a mass deliverance service right now. I'm going to shut it up. Get me free, God. Get me free. Come on, just say it again. Get me free. Mighty Holy Ghost. God's coming to work you over, and you take it out on everybody else. You prideful thing. You're trying to protect yourself. And God's coming to work you over and you make it somebody else's issue. And you bind it. And the Lord's saying, stop it. Shut it out. Motive is everything. You still glad you came to church tonight? Come on, are you still glad you came to church tonight? Come on, how many people's glad you still came to church tonight? Come on, how many people believe this is for the person beside you? <laughs> you know it's not for you. You know it's for the person beside you. We are for signs and wonders. God wants every single one of his children supernaturally equipped and endowed, moving in New Testament power. There is a desire in every human being to touch and experience the supernatural. Please never doubt it again for a second. Every human being has a thirst, a craving for the supernatural. That is the reason why multiplied millions who reject Christ in the Bible get mixed up in satanic operations of an occultic nature that looks so harmless but yet lead them on paths to destruction. You see, we might have shot down marijuana and the availability of it recreationally but all you need to do is go get yourself a card medically and you can get as much of it they blow the top of your head off. You come like a chimney, just smoke blazing out the top of your head. It's 
smelling like a skunk. First and foremost, I just can't even wonder why you want to smell like a skunk. I don't think anybody can smell it. Let me help you. We all can smell it. For the Lord is good. People forsake the reality of God and go after Satan's counterfeit because things don't come in their time. They dabble in things they should never dabble in. And they allow witchcraft to infiltrate the tapestry of their lives. Interwoven in their lives, now stuff gets a hold of them that never should have tangled within them. All because we want things quicker. All because we want things in our way. And within the church, then we prostitute ourselves. We prostitute ourselves in gifts. And we put ourselves out for hire. To the highest bit, use me. I can be there. And I don't believe that it's wrong for somebody to receive what is right for what they do. But I do believe that it is wrong to take the purity of a gift that God has given you and use it just to get yourself some coffers. The Bible says no one goes to war at his own expense. I believe that everybody should be treated fairly. Everybody should be done right by. How many people believe that? But that which is on your life is holy. And you must never allow it to be touched by pride or ulterior motive. You must do everything that you can do within your power to keep what God is and what He's done in you and through you sacred, holy and pure. And all that you can do is to get pride out of your life. You know what I love about this tonight? God didn't use the typical pride scriptures. Do you know why? Because we're used to that. And so what God does in his wisdom is he comes up in another way and he goes up a step, left to right, right a bit, and then hits it right where. You say, why would you ever need to preach a word like that in this church? I'm just being obedient to the Spirit. But I can tell you this, that if we're starting to walk the streets and take oil to the streets and walk in these neighborhoods, we're going to meet people that, even on the way to church tonight, turning left at the light, there's this, uh, this man in the medium, and he's kicking the cars, kicking the side doors of the cars at the stoplight. And I'm like, Lord, that's a, that's a devil. And so we're going to meet people like that out there on the streets. And what you're going to know is that his anointing is upon you to deliver them and set them free, seated and clothed, and in their right minds. Come on, lift your hands tonight. This is not about me. This is about Him. This move of God is not about me. It's about Him. This revival is not about me. It's about Him. God's touching you so that you can touch humanity. Come on. I feel an Abba song coming on. Touching me. Touching you. Aha. Uh -huh. 
understand. How can you do that in such a beautiful moment? God has a sense of humor. He meets you where you're at. And if you're really looking for a bit of direction or a bit of action, go to Quick Trip on 31st tonight on your way home. <laughs> you really want to see the power of God? Go sit for an hour right up here, 31st and Sheridan, a Quick Trip. Just sit there. I guarantee you, sit there for an hour and you'll at least see one person that needs delivered. Because the power is not supposed to be in here. It's supposed to be out there. I'm going to say that again. The power is not supposed to be just in here. It's supposed to be out there. Well, I just don't know. I mean, I'm never used. I mean, I just, you know, I'm waiting to be used. Go up to 31st and Sheridan. And sit in Quick Trip. No one will call you pastor, prophet. No one will give you a title. They might say other things to you. But if you want to unleash heaven, I tell you another place that you could go. You could go down into Denver and, uh, what is it, 6th? Oh, no, Denver, right downtown. Uh, Right? Oh no, right down, down. That quick take, that quick trip down there about 10.30 on a Sunday night? That's a happy demon place. If you want to be used, we can get you several places. We can send you. If you want to be sent, we can certainly get you started, right, Pastor Mark? How many people's blessed by Pastor Mark Murphy? And when do you see? He's going to be coming looking for you to go down to Denver downtown with him so that we can round up a few demons and send them to the dry places. Come on, any believers in this room tonight? Come on, everybody. You can't, you can't, you can't be at Millennial any more than a few weeks and not start looking for a demon somewhere. What's wrong with you? You didn't come here so that you could just be, I love it. I love the anointing there. I love the presence there. I love the worship there. No, we're actually working our tails off so that you can take the anointing and the presence and the worship right out there, right out there, right out there, right outside, right out there. Oh, man, I'm telling you, this was my first Sunday night in a while. I don't know if I'll do Sunday nights. Uh, I like Sunday mornings. He's real nice on a Sunday morning, but I don't know if I like him on a Sunday night. This is too mobilizing for me. How many people know we need to be mobilized? If we were going downtown, if I said, okay, guys, I need 40 people to go downtown with me right now after this service, how many people would go? See, I know you would. Oh, I sounded like the My Pitlow guy right there. I know you would. Oh, I have to get my cross out. Hold on. At mypillow.com. He just didn't do that, did he? I did. Stop 
if I look at your neighbor and say, stop being concerned about what people think. <laughs>